Okay, so it's a bright sunny morning. It's been a long time here coming. Uh, I'm over at Ted's house and stuff. Ted bought a, bought a long board uh, and we've already kind of looked at it and determined a couple things. One, um, his front truck was a little bit tight, so we loosened up a little bit. What I want to talk about real quick is notice the height of Ted's board off the ground and compare it to the step over there. So it's not too far off that. So I'm going to ask Ted to back up a minute so you get a better picture of his board height there. And you can see it and you can see the step. So we're going to move the board out of the way. So Ted kicked the board out of the way or whatever. Yep, and now step up on your step and get in your riding position, which is left foot forward. Okay, so we'll have you, I'll have you face the other way, sorry. Yeah, gotta, left foot forward, okay. So in order to stop Ted's board, he has to learn to put weight on his front leg like he is, let the right foot come over, oh, but man. not touch the ground. Right, yeah, not touch the ground. Oh, yeah, so I want you to take a position and I just let the foot come down. Don't reach for the ground, just hang the foot there. Oh my goodness. You feel that? Oh yeah. Okay, so we're not reaching for the ground. You've hung the foot because the decrease in your leg length that you've already made there is enough because we're not reaching for the ground. Right. I'm trying to get you to get the feeling of the, the difference in the leg length that you've already aligned. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do that a few times. And everybody on the other side of the camera who has a longboard type thing needs to do this. Do you feel tension and, and uh, stuff in that leg? In this leg? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's burned a little bit, right? Yeah, okay, so go back to your riding position. That's a lot of difference. Okay, go back to the riding position. Now, when you do this, I like that you're bending the knee, but what I want you to do is stand up taller to start with. This way? Yep, yep, because that's kind of probably where you'll be on the board. But instead of thinking of bending the ankle and the knee, can you just drop the hip and then meet it with, with the leg over? Put weight on the front foot, now leg over. Drop the hip, don't think the knee, leg over for the break. Don't put it down. So just maintain that leg over. So he's dropped the hip, now leg over, but not reach for the ground, don't reach for the ground. And I like that he cocked his heel up and he put his foot against the side of the step. So we're good. That makes sense to everybody? That was balanced. Okay, so we're out here in the sunshine and uh, Ted and I are out and uh, we're realizing that what we have to do in order to skateboard, longboard or whatever is to fundamentally stop things that we naturally do that are, are attached to our body and the way we've moved all the way up to whatever years we are. For me, 78, for Ted, 60 what? I'm 70. 70, okay. <laughs> so a lot of the things that we do for protecting ourselves are self-inherent through all the bouncing we've done in accidents and stuff. So I'm gonna ask Ted to face me. And we do this for snowboard students all the time. We used to get them out in the snow and we say, okay, well you got your stuff on, go ahead and drop down the snow on your knees. So I'm asking Ted to drop down and, and it's not snow, but now it's grass and it doesn't absorb, but he's gonna drop, nope. But I want you just to, that was a kneel down. You betcha, and I'm not okay. straight. Okay, so, so Ted just said, that he wanted to ease into that, which he did by kneeling down. So do it again. And look this way, because you're, you're coming this way. And move into your safety zone of your knee pads. Okay, assuming I would step off the board. I'm, a, I'm assuming that things went bad, actually. Yeah, then it's just gonna okay. be a, a okay. dive in that direction. All right, so now I'll and step over. So when I came out the other day and I told myself, go ahead and fall, I said, yeah, sure. So I got out there and I did what the body would naturally want to do. I said, okay, drop. And I reached forward. Yeah. Okay. Because that's very similar to what I do when snowboarding. Yeah. But now I have to train myself. That second part I did shouldn't happen. I have to train myself to come in here and say, when I drop, it means instead of leaning to drop, I drop the hips. Right, okay. To here. Yep. Because this allows me to stay back in this zone without getting into this zone. Yep, This yep. is a trouble zone. Yep. 
So I'm in trouble and I'm riding and, and whatever. You see kids in the uh, skate park when they come down the walls, they yeah, drop. They drop and they slide, slide on their knees. They don't put their knees down, they drop. And they continue and they to move. Back. Yeah, they continue to move. They continue to lean back this way against the wall. Maybe their hands go here. Yeah. But the hands don't go here. So, guys, right. learn to trust your knee pads. <laughs> okay, fair and deal. you have to practice this repeatedly <sighs> because I can tell you seven or eight times I put the hands out. And I could not get myself to stop the defensive reach with the hands even though I ask snowboard students to do it all the time and expect yeah. them to. I couldn't do it until I finally said, no, don't, don't turn around and squat down, drop the hips. Yeah, get closer. Drop the hips and, and let the legs and the hips relax after. Drop, relax, and keep the So, I hope that that's helpful to people in a way of getting down if you have to. So this is Ted fairly early on in the uh, push and ride stage. Okay. Push and ride. Keep going. And walk away. Okay, and the walk off was good because you didn't kick the board ahead. Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Close. Good. Nice. Do it again? No, no, okay, but it worked. Brake stop. Yep. Yeah, so. So. Okay, so we're dressed up to to do we're dressed up to do boarding. I don't want to say snowboarding, but it's not all different. Riding, some riding. kind of riding. We're riding, we're riding the board. So I have these hand pieces on. That's hard plastic. Okay, if it hits the ground, it's all right. It skids, and then if it skids, it'll go up to my elbow. And there's some more hard plastic. Okay. I would like to have some around here, but the rest of me's got a leather leather shirt on. And then under here, these are Kevlar pants. I wear them when I ride motorcycle. They have openings in the inside, okay. and those are... Yep, no pain. Those are knee pants. So we've been out here, and Jim has frightened the devil out of me, showing me all these things that I didn't know on the skateboard. And I've been practicing to my, to mine and Jim's kudos. I have not fallen. I have not fallen and hurt myself. The this other day when you came out before we worked together, you I, took some falls. I shot the board out a few places and I did some things. No, we didn't do them again, but it was like, whoa, what is this? And no idea what's going to bite back. So we're taking a very, very slow approach to it. You know, thinking about the feet, thinking about the angles, thinking about the posture, thinking about where we're standing on the board and distributing weight, and walking through that. Key word there, walking. There's no, never got up to any speed. Jim's able to do a 360 on his board, and almost on mine. I haven't quite got that turn yet. Again, going forward, 
straight? How do I stop? Go forward straight? How do I turn? How do I stop? Real slow. So today you accomplished a foot drag, which you didn't really have. Yep. So a left foot forward ride, you accomplished a foot drag. Got better you, placement. You accomplished an awareness of the feet, where they go on the board. Better placement, yep. You found out that your trucks were too tight in the front, and the board didn't turn at all until we started working on loosening them up a little bit and to get a little under, wheel turn. And equipment understanding. Equipment understanding is also part of it. You go out and buy something, you step on it, you don't know what it's going to do yet, <laughs> and you got to learn to make adjustments. Ted and I adjust our snowboards and our bindings God knows how many times, especially me in a season, <laughs> until I find it to a point that says, wow, that's what I've been looking for. And but the big thing for Ted today is that it was comfortable. Yeah. He didn't take any falls. We don't do a darn thing different with students in the winter. We don't go out to have them fall. No. We go out to make them comfortable. We go out to, to make them understand the movements that they're already using every day in life. And we hope you guys enjoy this and will stay with us even though we don't move very fast because we want to move longer. Yeah. All right. And the same, the same factor is involved here. We're making a big, long, wide radius turn. Once I understand that and I know how to manipulate that, I can shorten that radius. Right. We're, we're going from J's to C's yep. to S's. I know I All can right. do that. We're out on that. All Thanks, right. guys. Cheers. <laughs>